Uh, and if you want a headline, it's this. Two thirds of students regularly cannot afford their essentials. Affordable housing is considered as uh, somebody spending not less than 30% uh, of their income on the housing, uh, but students on average are spending 56% of their income. 60% of students are studying without their family support, and this is particularly profound for Māori and Pacifica students whose rates are, of course, higher. 64% of students do not have enough time to attend classes as much as they would like, often because they are working too much or because the likes of cost of transport is too high. None of this is inevitable. If we can impress one thing today, it is that none of this is inevitable. It is the consequence of political decisions that have been made over the past few decades and continue to be made to this day. And the government can't hide from these facts any longer. While we've asked the Ministry of Social Development, the Ministry of Education, and the Minister himself in the House, and we have come up with blanks to answers which have been, uh, to questions that have been answered today. These facts are now here in black and white. And of course, that was one of the two core things that we were trying to achieve with the student inquiry. The first was irrefutable evidence about the state of affairs for students in Aotearoa, New Zealand today. And the second was to build a sense of solidarity, to help students who are struggling individually to understand that these issues are not theirs alone, but that they are systemic, and therefore that they can change. Education is a right. It's not a privilege. We have an obligation to ensure that all students are able to live while studying, and this inquiry has proved that students are struggling to make ends meet. Postgrad students were promised by Chris Hipkins, that the allowance would be extended to them. However, he has broken his word. Payments to students need to be accessible and livable. They should be provided regardless of how much part-time income that a student may make out of necessity to, su to supplement themselves, especially in a cost of living crisis. A universal education income, a weekly payment to every student, regardless of level of study, age, parental income, would help students meet day-to-day -day costs and reduce long-term debt. Our Prime Minister states that education is the greatest enabler in society. And the Labour Party promised a fees-free tertiary education system to improve the lives of students and to gain votes just five years ago. Yet today, through deliberate political choices and distinct inaction, students remain some of the most vulnerable people in our communities, borrowing money to live in an environment that makes them sick through mold and cold, all while eating two minute noodles. By investing in our students now, we can establish a society that will not allow anyone to endure living through a period of brutal, transient poverty whilst they study. We know that disabled people live in poverty. We know that disabled people have high unemployment rates. And we know that education is connected to both of these things, and yet we continue to allow our disabled students to suffer while attempting to get a degree for which they are accruing massive student debt, playing, placing their health and well-being at risk, and facing ongoing daily discrimination. This inquiry shows us that when politicians think of students itself a once in a blue moon event, they aren't thinking of disabled or deaf students. We are invisible to Parliament, but overrepresented in the statistics. Less likely to be able to afford basic necessities, less likely to spend as much time studying as we would like, and less likely to be able to afford or access transport. And that is if we even get into higher tertiary education in the first place, something the Ministry of Education itself notes we are less likely to do. 25% of the students who participated in the survey identified as disabled putting their experiences into the world so that we can learn from them. It is time to actually listen to the voices of students, especially disabled Māori and Pacifica students, who are telling us that they are not experiencing the barrier-free education which they are constantly promised. We can and we must do better. Mm. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay. Ralph, do you want to